Jazakum Allah Khair, welcome. On behalf of Brighter Horizons Academy, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 12th grade graduation of 2021. I am honored to serve as this year's Master of Ceremonies. I am Jihad Matariya. Let me first, let me be the first to express how happy we are to share in this joyous occasion with our graduates and you. Please join me in welcoming our graduates.
Jazakum Allah Khair. Welcome dear graduates. Let us first begin this evening with a, with a Quran recitation by Wali Muhammad, Senior Class President. Muhammad, excuse me, Wali Muhammad, Senior Class President. Okay, just watch your sentence. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم كلا إن الإنسان لا يطغى أو رآه استغنى إن إلى ربك رجع أرأيت الذي ينهى عبدا إذا صلى أرأيت إن كان على الهدى أو أمر بالتقوى أرأيت إن كذب وتولى ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى كلا لئن لم ينتهي لنسفعا بالناصية ناصية كاذبة خاطئة فليدع نادية سندع الزبانية كلا لا تطعه واسجد واقترب صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خير Beautiful recitation from Surah Al-Halaq Now we want to call and ask for Ms. Shahd Al-Badawi to come to give the translation your Lord who created, created man from a clinging cloth. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught humanity what they knew not. No, but indeed man transgresses, in that he looks upon himself as self-sufficient. Indeed, to your Lord is the return. Have you seen the one who forbids, a servant when he prays? Have you seen if he is upon guidance? or enjoins righteousness? Have you seen if he denies and turns away? Does he not know that Allah sees? But no, if he does not desist, we will surely drag him by the forelock, a lying, sinning forelock. Then let him call his associates. We will call the angels of hellfire. No, do not obey him, but prostrate and draw closer to Allah. Greatly appreciate it. Please bear with us as we're working with this additional noise. I want to say welcome graduates, parents, families, and friends, esteemed faculty and staff. I'm honored to be this year's uh, master's, I'm sorry, this year's graduation master's of, master of ceremonies. It's a privilege bestowed upon me by the almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah. I want to uh, go ahead and thank some of our guests for being here, obviously aside from our uh, graduates. First, I want to take a minute to say hello and thank you for being here. Uh, Dr. Yusuf Abu Kayas, ISF Shura Chairman and members of the ISF Shura for being here as well. 
Also, thanks to Brother Hossein Kathan. Also, thanks go out to Brother Hossein Kathan, ISF president, and the members of the, I, of the uh, ISF. A special thanks goes out to our fearless leader and biggest supporter, Mr. Saeed Saeed, our BHA board of directors chairman, as well as thank you to the members of the board for being here. A special shout out, I have to give it up to the leadership team. Wallahi, they can make coming to BHA every day so much more enjoyable. I'm grateful and forever in their debt for their continuous support, guidance, and honesty. Ms. Nsaf Lashtab, Dr. Adnan Umran, Ms. Karam Skate, Mr. Sami Musa, Ms. Samira Siddiqui, and Dr. Ali Abu Hilala. I would also like to say thank with uh, all everything you see in front of you today cannot really be done truly uh, without Ms. Sana Azam, Jazak Malawir. Mr. Arbar is Khair, Jazak Malawir. As well as Ms. Mehnaz Kafri. Jazak Malawir for all the, the work, the time and effort given to put it, putting it for this event. Words cannot describe how much I am appreciative. I would also like to thank His Honor, Mayor of Garland, Mr. Scott LeMay, for joining us. Woo! At this time, I would like to introduce our 2021 salutatorian. He was born in Texas and plans on attending the prestigious MIT. Let me say that this is the first in BHA history. Woo! Where he plans on majoring in aerospace engineering. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming Mr. Fadis and the God to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, I'd like to welcome all the staff, teachers, parents, friends, and of course today's stars, the class of 2021. Please give it up. Okay, technical difficulties. It's an, it's an honor to be this class's salutatorian. I'd first like to extend thanks to our teachers who worked so hard to help us get where we are today. Whether it was helping us out in the classroom through the past few years or helping us tra transition to online learning, they've been with us every step of the way. And to Ms. Mahnaz for helping us through the weird world of college applications and helping us have a semblance of a normal senior year. To the admin team and events department for always working with us to, cr to start events at last minute on our part. Uh, and to the PTO for helping make the school what it is today, always working in the background. Originally, I had planned to deliver a brilliant speech on why BHA should convert the playgrounds into a dirt bike course. Unfortunately, it's been brought to my attention that I don't get my diploma until after this ceremony, so that speech will have to wait. It's very hard to find a good topic to talk about for a class that's seen it all. A global pandemic, civil unrest, Texas freezing over for a week, but through everything, we kept on going. And that, in and of itself, is an achievement. Be proud that you kept up with all your work and still graduated. As cliche as it may be, it really does feel like only a year or two ago that we were all freshmen, totally unsure of what it meant to be high schoolers, with big dreams about our senior years. Personally, I'd always dreamed that my senior year would be interesting. 
I've learned my lesson now, and after this year, I will wish that all years are boring. However, there are some good lessons we can take away from this year. First off, make sure that you have a strong group of friends. Whether you're studying here in Texas, close to home, or hundreds of miles away, make sure to have a support net that will pull you up and keep you on the right path, no matter the situation. And secondly, learn not to take things for granted, especially the small moments in day-to-day -day life, because those can become the precious memories that we'll look back fondly upon. Today marks the start of a new chapter in our lives, but as you move forward, remember this time you spent here with your friends, the memories you made, and the lessons you, lear you learned, and use them to carry you forward through your future. Thank you all for a wonderful high school experience and make dua for everyone here's success in the future. Assalamu alaikum. Congratulations again to our 2021 salutatorium. I would like to introduce our 2021 valedictorian to the stage. She was born in California and plans on majoring in cognitive science and UTD. Please join me in, congr in congratulating and welcoming Ms. Hannah Ahmed to the stage. the most merciful. I'd like to start by thanking Allah for everything he has blessed us with, including the opportunity to be gathered here on this beautiful Saturday evening. I'd also like to begin by sending my salam upon our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. After receiving the phone call on Thursday, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. After receiving the phone call on Thursday, I thought it was a dream even after everyone told me it wasn't. The shy girl who came in 10th grade, valedictorian, how is this possible? I'm still in shock, and it probably will be for the longest time. It doesn't matter. I was asked to give a three minute speech, but how could I sum up three years in three minutes? It doesn't add up. I guess I have no choice but to try. So here goes. My first day at VHA was on a rainy August morning. I was nervous and didn't know what to expect, coming from a small, tight-knit Islamic school in Boston. But I was welcomed with open arms. Everyone has been super helpful, and soon enough I felt like I'd been there forever. That's the kind of atmosphere you'll find at VHA. Of course, I have to acknowledge the elephant in the room. <laughs> the last 15 months were an experience. Junior year, spring break, about to start. This virus, otherwise known as COVID-19, was creeping up on us. And suddenly, like my cat panda on a toy mouse, it pounced. School was closed. Everything went online. Nobody saw each other for months at a time. Senior year was definitely unusual and unprecedented. College applications online without college visits. Very few senior outings and get-togethers. But this is BHA we are talking about. We found our own ways to make our last year here memorable and fun. We pulled through together as a class, just like we always do. From a socially distanced senior sunrise to March Madness, thanks to BHA's events and college guidance department, we enjoyed our last days together at BHA. This is a special day for not only me, but also everyone else here. 
classmates, friends, teachers, families, and everyone else who made this possible. I'd like to thank all of my teachers for their constant support and leadership. I've learned a, I've learned a lot from all of you and I look up to you. I'd like to thank my family for everything they've done for me. Mom, Dad, Hamza, Mohsen, Panda, and all of my extended family. Thank you for always having my back, no matter how bad I mess up. Thank you for the constant love, comfort, and support. I'd like to thank all of my friends for the fun we've had over the years. Those here today and those who couldn't make it. You know who you are. Keep in touch. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. May Allah bless you all. And last, but certainly not least, a huge thank you and congratulations to not only my classmates and friends, but also my family, the BHA class of 2021. Thank you. Again, congratulations to our 2020-21 valedictorian, Ms. Hannah Ahmed. I would like to introduce our 2021 valedictorian. Yes, we had two, alhamdulillah, this year. A valedictorian to the state. She was born in Texas and plans to attend UTD and major in healthcare studies. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming Ms. Layla Ahmed, I'm sorry, Ms. Layla Muhammad to the stage. Before I start, I wanted to say, Brother Ihab, you may not physically be here with us today, but you left unforgivable, unfor unforgettable memories with each of us. Rahimakallah. You've all heard this already, but again, welcome class of 2021, honored guests, families, friends, and esteemed faculty. Now I know that a lot of you haven't actually seen me in their classes this year or last, so I'd like to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Leila. We went to high school together. Congratulations to every single one of you. When I look back at the memories shared with you as a class over the past six years, I should be smiling for the rest of the summer, maybe even longer if I didn't have to go to college at the end of it. Whenever you enter a brand new stage of your life, it is a momentous occasion, filled with the exhilarating excitement of possibility maybe a fear of the unknown, and hopefully a bittersweet goodbye. Everyone experiences high school differently. When you look back, you may remember hard days and harder nights, but I hope you also remember people. Memories, memories that made all, uh, memories that made it all worthwhile, and lessons to carry you further than you ever thought possible. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. Because today, as we don our caps and gowns, it's not just the end of an era, it's the beginning of a, of a future that you choose to create. That future, however, I'm going to leave up to you. To be perfectly honest, I'm in no position to give a lot of good advice about your future, just because I was really good at searching stuff up and using SparkNotes. We're in the same boat, you and I. Finally facing adult responsibilities is no easy challenge. So if I could leave you with a quote to remember in these perilous moments of anxiety where you're filled with self-doubt and fear of failure, it's that if an egg is broken by an outside force, life ends. If broken from inside, life begins. As long as you lead the change in your life, you are in control of the outcome with the qadr of Allah. Subhanahu Great things always begin from the inside. Your life goals have immense value, but nothing can compete with your value. The core elements of what makes you, you, are what will carry you through life. They will take your successes and goals and fill them with meaning. Be cautious of shallow achievements. Focus on the quality of your life. 
Our definition of success is deeply personal, and the only way to attain it is by focusing on your own growth, a never-ending journey. As Prophet Muhammad said, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. The English, the English language describes the passage of time as something you spend. Your time is the most precious thing you have, and who and what you choose to spend it on is a huge determiner of your priorities. Take a moment to reflect what you spend your time on. Make sure that in these moments of reflection, you don't look back and feel regret. Spend your time on prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on what you care about and being around who you love, since nothing is more important than your healthy relationships. We were put here by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we all have a purpose. Throughout our lives, we may find ourselves led down different paths and forming new relationships, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be the very first relationship that you can never neglect. There's no better way to start a new chapter of your life than by making sure you care about that relationship above all others. Strive to be the best version of yourself. A sheep never leads and a lion never follows. Be phenomenal. Congratulations, class of 2021. I honor you all and good luck. Not that any of you should need it, inshallah. Thank you. Again, our 2020-21 Valedictorian Ms. Leila Muhammad. Dr. Yaman Umran graduated from Brighter Horizons Academy in 2004 and completed his undergraduate studies at the University of Texas in Dallas. He then pursued his medical studies and completed his internal medicine res residency training at the University of Texas at Houston. He currently practices as a physician at the University of Texas Medical Branch at Houston where he resides with his wife and daughter. Please welcome Dr. Yaman Umran to the stage to de deliver this year's word from the alumni. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allah loves you and he's closer to you than you think. And this is the most valuable lesson that I learned because I remember on the day of my high school graduation there was a lot of pride and joy because it really is a big deal. It's a major milestone. But I remember feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty as to what the future holds, what it means to be a responsible adult going further in this world. But Allah loves you and he's closer to you than you think. And one of the many ways Allah shows his love is that he puts you in an environment that constantly reminds you of him. Looking back, the greatest blessing that BHA gave me were acts of worship like the daily of God in the morning, praying Salah in congregation, recite, learning to recite Quran, even just saying Salam to each other. And when we say Salam to each other, the angels gather in those areas and they return the Salams. This tranquility is something you'll be seeking time and time again. And Allah shows us and He trained us through our years at BHA how to constantly come back to that. And then I can go on for hours about the impact that so many teachers and mentors had in my life and that would just consume the rest of the program. But two people in particular I have to mention, I felt compelled to mention as I was preparing for this speech. They didn't work for BHA but they were very much part of the BHA family and that's Ambu Shukri Abu Bakr and I'm a Mufid Abdul Qadir. May Allah liberate them and unite them with their families immediately. Ameen. Amu Shukri gave 
a khutbah in this masala here 20 years ago that stuck with me. I think about all the khutbahs, all the Friday sermons that I listened to, the, the hundreds or thousands of them before and after that, and none of them really stuck with me like he did. He talked about Allah's love, how Islam is all about love, love of ourselves, our families, and humanity at large. And this obviously he exemplified in his work. But his sincerity stuck with me because I wasn't used to hearing about Islam and Allah in that way. But I, I, remember being sh I remember being shocked listening to that khutbah. But that stuck with me and that's where this first lesson came. Ammu Mufid, we spent a summer around 20 years ago helping build the musalla here. And I remember his energy and sincerity. We would see him by himself and he's working really hard, huffing and puffing, sweating, doing hard labor, trying to build this musalla. And he's singing an ashid to himself, saying adhkar out loud to himself. And anyone who knows Amu Mufid knows the energy he used to bring. And we were a group of pimple-faced 14, 15 year olds, not knowing what to do. And he encouraged us to come and help him. And we shared in his efforts. And that, that, that stuck with me the rest of my life. So Allah surrounds us with these examples in our lives as a sign of His love and all you have to do is pay attention to them. They're all around us. That was the first lesson. The second lesson, most of the good in your life comes from your parents. Most of the good in your life comes from your parents. It'll come from their dua and their sacrifice. And I remember this age in high school, it's a very delicate age we're going through all kinds of changes and we might notice the shortcomings of our parents. We might get a little snappy with them. We might look down at them sometimes. But you'll get past this phase and you'll realize that all the good in your life comes from the dua and the sacrifice of your parents, no matter their shortcomings. So honor your parents. Be respectful to them, even if they're difficult with you. Be good to them and you'll witness Allah showering you with His blessings. And I wouldn't be a good son if I didn't mention my own mama and baba. May Allah bless you for your sacrifices. May Allah bless you with Jannah al firdaus al-A'la bi ghayri hisab without any accounting. Ameen. And for all your parents as well. Number three, you will be tested and those tests will be good for you. You will be tested and those tests will be good for you. Just like your minds have been tested for the last 12 years, so you get to this point and get your high school degree, your hearts will also be tested time and time again throughout your life. And if you pass that test, you don't just get a degree. You get eternal bliss in paradise. We ask Allah to grant that to all of us and our loved ones. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ حَتَّى نَعْلَمَ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَنَبْلُوَ أَخْبَارَكُمْ We will certainly test you until we prove those of you who truly struggle in Allah's cause and remain patient and we will prove the truth of your claims. Because every single one of us will make claims about ourselves. We'll claim to be good people, Muslims, we stand for Islamic values, we love our families, we love our communities, we love humanity. Just know that Allah will test those claims and those tests will come in the forms of conflict and difficulty. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests our brothers and sisters in Palestine, as we've witnessed for the last many decades and, and recently. Just like He tests the HLF5 and their families. This past year with COVID-19, where we lost so many loved ones, like our beloved brother Ihab, rahimahullah. The recent Texas blackout. And just your daily struggles, your daily anxieties and worries. These are all good for us. And this is the hope and optimism that Rasulullah came with when he said, He said the situation of the believer is amazing. Whatever happens to them, if we think it's good or bad, it's all good in the end. It's all good in the end. In times of ease, we're grateful. And in times of difficulty, we're patient. And this hope and optimism is really what every human being yearns for and longs for. This inner peace, that it's all good in the end. 
that we're not going through all these things for no reason, no purpose, and no end in sight. And this, my brothers and sisters, this is really more important than any degree or worldly prestige. So just to summarize the three points again, Allah loves you and he's closer to you than you think. Most of the good in your life comes from your parents and you will be tested and those tests will be good for you because they'll make you better. Congratulations again to the class of 2021 and may Allah guide and protect you every step of the way on your journey. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Yaman. At this time, I would like to invite. At this time, I would like to, uh, to a ask you to help me w uh, join. I'm sorry. Let me start over. At this time, please join me in welcoming Brother Saeed Saeed, Chairman of the Board of Directors, to the stage to share a few words. السلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم Welcome dear graduates distinguished guests Mr. President and uh, ISF chairman if he's here I welcome you to the 2021 and alhamdulillah I'm going to start uh, addressing the graduates because it's about you I'm not here to impress anybody but you. So stat says that 90% of you will forget what happened today or who said what and where. Just because 10%, the chance you're gonna remember what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pick up what a brother Yaman, it couldn't be any better that he set it up because subhanAllah, great minds work alike. So everything he said, I'm gonna summarize it. Be happy and don't worry. Allah loves you. And I will tell you a little story that stat says 80% they never forget. So the 20%, if you're thinking about something, remember, don't worry, be happy. Allah loves you. And you're going to hear a story you're never going to forget. Everybody knows the blackbird. Crow, blackbird, every country has it. The blackbird has a little egg, the egg hatch, and there is a bird. The bird is white. The parents comes to the nest, looks at the bird. It's not my son. It's not my chick. They abandon. They don't feed that bird. A day, two, three, why? Because he's white. And the parents, black bird, they're black. SubhanAllah, Look at the magic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in the Quran. I'm not going to complicate it. I'm going to make it simple for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a smell, certain smell that ew, bugs and other stuff come to him or her. They start eating day after day after day after day. The white bird becomes what? You're right becomes black. Parents comes in, they're checking out. Oh my God, this is our son, this is our girl. They start taking care of him. Who sent the risk for that bird? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings in the best form. Allah writes your risk when you're only 100 days in the womb. Be happy, don't worry. But there is a prerequisite for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the sustenance, the wealth, and the health. Before I jump into that, I dare anybody to name one rich, humble, famous person that did not seek philanthropy and reach to grasp self-actualization 
after the end, at the end of his life. You can't. Whether it's Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Uthman bin Affan, yes. I had the Sahaba, he did the best philanthropy. If inshallah you'll go to Mecca, everything you enjoy around Kaaba, it's because of Uthman. So the point is, you will be going, I'm going to study, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to be a doctor, a lawyer, attorney, whatever, businessman. You achieve, 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 and then you hit the brakes, you're 65, 70, what do you do? Oh my God, what did I do? I need to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you start doing the philanthropy and doing double the work. Start now. So, he said the lessons. I'm going to add just one small, make it simpler for you. Give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 25 minutes out of your day. Can we do that? If you can do that, put your hand up. 100%. And guess what? 100% of class 2021 graduated, alhamdulillah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with the knowledge that that knowledge you can use to benefit others as well. I'm privy that, alhamdulillah, privileged that I met you and I, I listened to you and mashallah, you're one of probably the best graduate class, outspoken, well thought, you work in harmony. And I'm proud and honored that I'm here today to address you and give you something just to think about. Don't worry, be happy because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has your risk, has your future, but do your due diligence so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you more. One, 25 minutes out of your day. That is the salawat. Why? Because the salat is the pillar of Islam. And the salat itself will keep that communication. So you're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of 24 hours, just 30, 25 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. The second one, Brother Yaman says your parents. Now I'm here in front of you, I'm not gonna tell you my age, but my son is 32 years old, okay? So for you, don't wait to realize that your parents are the door for blessings. I'm sure you've heard it many, many, many times. Seek their dua. Even in the best times, just say, Baba, Mama, can you make dua for me? If they said, oh, what's going on? Nothing. <laughs> Just I need your dua always. So number one, keep that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, your parents, seek their dua. Make sure you please them. Third, it's very important, start it early. Don't wait like a brother, your man, 14 years. I love you. Get back into the Alumni Association. Get back to BHA. You're part of this family. We don't want to miss you for 14 years. If you're local, come to BHA, give some feedback, just like you did in the dinner. We rely on that. And I end it by a dua for your parents. May Allah bless you parents. May Allah give you more and more for bringing them to BHA. And may Allah for the graduates open the doors of wealth, prosperity for you. Amin, amin, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair. I'd like to uh, call up to the stage Brother uh, Hossein Qatan, the I ISF president, please, to deliver the, um, the scholarships. I have uh, four pages here I was gonna talk about but uh, between uh, Dr. Yaman and brother uh, Saeed I think I have to look at it to see which areas that he did not cover and I'll talk about that is that okay with you I won't take much of your time
so everybody has covered the welcoming, so it has been done. But welcome again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I would like to speak a little bit as a parent. And uh, I just have a statement that I would like to leave with you, the graduates, and every single child in this congregation. Every single one that has a dad. That you need to know one and important statement that let it be known for us parents the only ones we wish to be better than us are our children this was not covered the second one that today after you are graduating you are going to be on your own remember you know yourself best more than anyone else so go out there and do your best. Be a better Muslim, better teacher, better engineer, entrepreneur, doctor, whichever area you want to be at, be the best. And always remember that you are Muslim. So please be the best Muslim out there. You are representing Islam and we would like everyone to know that in your character. Never give up on your principles. Those principles that you have learned at home, at school, at your masjid, and from those wise ones like uh, Brother Saeed uh, and myself. And remember, that success is not your degree, it's not money, and it's not the materialistic things that you are going to gain. Success is what you do with it. Success is leaving this world in better shape than you have found it. So again, the ultimate success is the success in hereafter the success to be there in paradise, insha'Allah, with everyone, insha'Allah, in this congregation and everyone that we love and all the Muslims, insha'Allah. And finally, again, don't forget about us. Don't forget about the BHA. We would like to hear from you. We would like to hear about your success. Remember, your success is our success. When we see you out there, doing something, wherever you have uh, gained a degree, or running for a mayor of Garland, but, but don't run against uh, Scott Lee, Lee May. Uh, but anyway, if you do this in here, one of us and every one of us will say, we remember that person, he graduated, we were there. God bless you, congratulations, and may Allah bless you all, and your parents, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I would like to call upon the, uh, the three recipient of, can, can you uh, call the names please? Faris al Nagar, Leila Muhammad, and Hannah Ahmad. Please come forward.
We are giving out more scholarships. Dr. Ali Abu Halala is our athletic director. Please come forward to present this year's Student Athletic Award. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm very pleased to be here in this event and announce uh, the recipient of our athletic scholarship. First, class 2021, congrats. You achieved your goal. We are touched by all the candidates' commitment to their studies, sport, family, community, and their future. Brighter Horizons Academy Athletic Scholarship is given to one male and one female senior student athlete based on outstanding athletic, academic and athletic achievement, Islamic character, discipline record, and a desire or interest in pursuing a college degree. The female, the female athletic scholarship recipient maintain a GPA of 4.2 while she played or represented the volleyball varsity team and soccer team. The recipient is Lin Tasabahji. The male athletic scholarship recipient maintain a GPA 4.3 while playing for the varsity soccer team. He also also distinguished as the district first team player and all state second team. The scholarship recipient is Muhammad Morsi. At this time, we're going to award, we're going to call up Mr. Saf Lashar, principal of the ECE, to present the diplomas. At the end of the uh, that presentation, we will we have a student-led uh, we have a presentation from the uh, the students, the senior class, for a video. So again, we're going to go ahead and call up Mr. Saf Lashar, please, to award the diplomas, inshallah. and Mubarak to our graduates and their parents. We'll start with the top 25 students and then we'll go by alphabetical order, inshallah. <laughs> Hana Ahmed. What's your step? Parents, let's 
cheer up for our uh, graduates in Charlotte. This is their day. This is their big day, so. <laughs> Ferris and Nager. <laughs> Nejali Habush. Rahma Arif. Lina Hussein. Wali Mohman. Norman Ahmed. I am so sorry. Afrah Qureishi. Sophia Siddiqui. Samir Sajjad. Hamza Wahid. Danan Hashmi. Mohamed Morsi. Iman Abu Ali. Faiz Nazar. Rami Qaisar. Ahmed Lashtar. Noor Abdel Karim. Rana Abu Auda. Ahmed Abu Afifa. Maryam Bakri. Omar Barakat. Noor Shaban. Delia first. 
Delia Dibas. Marwan El Awadi. شهد البدوي يوسف الشادلي عمار حسين محمد إدريس سكينة إدريس ميمونة إسماعيل قليمة إسماعيل هادية جنجوة جمانة كيلاني محمد خالد خربطلي جنين مهدي سهيل مرسي
زينب صديقي to be a wild crowd. So please have a seat. Please, if you can have a seat, we're still in the program, inshallah. There is a few things. Jazakumullah kul khair, mashallah. Do you really rock the soccer field? Can you please have a seat, please? Jazakumullah kul khair. Please have a seat, inshallah. We'll take pictures in a minute. We don't want to slow the program down. Graduates, have a seat, please. Jazakumullah kul khair. Can you please have a seat? Yeah, she's coming. Open the window. We'll take pictures in a minute, inshallah. Please have a seat. Jazakumullah kul khair. Assalamu alaikum. Can we just delay the pictures for just a minute? We, we, we want to continue the program. Have a seat, please. Jazakumullah kul khair. Can we slow down the pictures just for a minute, please? Have a seat. Jazakumullah kul khair. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah, MashaAllah. Please have a seat. Jazakumullah kul khair. Can you have a seat, please? MashaAllah. You really rock the soccer field. Great. All right. Jazakumullah khair. So I come. We have uh, two videos to show. If you could just please bear with us again, we were waiting. We wanted to change things up to have the sun go down so you could be able to see the video on the screen behind us. So this is why we had to change around the program a little bit. Imam Omar Suleiman is a world-renowned scholar and activist for human rights. He is the founder and president of the Yaqeen Institute for Islamic Research and a professor of Islamic studies at Southern Methodist University. He's also the resident scholar of the Valley Ranch Islamic Center and co-chair emeritus of Faith Forward Dallas at Thanksgiving Square. 
of multi-faith coalition, that's a tongue twister, of, of, of clergy for peace and justice. He frequently writes for CNN and USA Today. He has been named one of 500 most influential Muslims in the world by the Royal Islamic Strategic Studies Center of Jordan. He's been recognized by CNN as one of 25 most influential Muslims in America and has been included amongst the Frederick Douglass 200 most influential Americans whose modern day work embody the legacy of the great abolitionist. Unfortunately, Sheikh Omar cannot make it here today as he is leading the March for Palestine in Washington, D.C. However, he wanted to share a message with the class of 2021. Again, the screen behind me, it's going to be difficult to see, but inshallah you'll be able to hear it all clearly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, BHA class of 2021. wa wa As you all may know, I was looking forward to being with you in person. But of course, with the situation that is taking place in Palestine, I had to go to Washington DC to be a part of the National Palestine March. But at the same time, I wanted to send this message, not just of congratulations, but of some advice. As the world around us is changing, we are also changing. And as things at times seem to get more difficult, we also have more trials and more tribulations that come our way. Yet still we learn with everything that comes our way, the ability to persevere, the ability to accomplish, the ability to be productive when things around us seem so pessimistic. And here's what I want to talk about with you today in your moment of joy. You know, we learn about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that despite him carrying the weight of the world, not just on his shoulders, but in his heart, the Prophet ﷺ was able to enjoy the moments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to him to enjoy. And especially moments of accomplishment, moments of achievement, moments that should be celebrated. As you complete this incredible endeavor today of going through high school and taking that next step in your journey, know that there were a lot of people starting with your parents that were vested in this journey, that longed to see this day, and that are excited and probably a little bit nervous about what comes next for you. And oftentimes we talk about the burden, right? Um, this idea that no one carries the burden of another person. But here's something that I want to give you, inshallah ta'ala, with the few minutes that I have right now. Just like no one carries the burden of another person, no one inherits the motivation of another person. Your parents can only give you so much. Your teachers can only teach you so much. At some point, they have to become your own values and they have to become your own motivations or else you're not just going to be unhappy, you're not going to be productive. You're not going to achieve any meaningful progress or any meaningful dream. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. He's blessed you with an environment. He's blessed you with parents, friends, family, whoever it may be that have put in front of you measures and means of success. And now you have the opportunity to capitalize on all of that that was provided to you and to take it to the next level, inshallah ta'ala, and to achieve on your own and to be productive for your own sake, of course, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but ultimately for your own success and your own moving forward. At some point, people no longer hold your hand to pray. At some point, no one reminds you to read Quran. At some point, no one reminds you to put in that extra work. At some point, it becomes just you. And this is something that we take from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he talks about ihsan in worship, excellence in worship. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it is tara, that you worship Allah as if you can see him. And if you can't see him, then you know that he sees you. Now, this is true when it comes to our worship. But outside of our worship, what this ultimately means is that you set your own standards in accordance with his sight. Again, you set your own standards in accordance with his sight. You have an opportunity to surpass all of those that are around you, and you have an opportunity to surpass all standards that have been set for you. 
And that is what distinguishes a person amongst their peers. And that is what makes a person more pleasing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at people that achieve great things in athletics, when you look at people that achieve great things in their career, it is because they put in the extra work and that came from a place of extra motivation. And so they had an extra sense of perseverance, an extra sense of purpose. And ta'ala, when it comes to us, when we do for Allah, an extra share of paradise. I want you to realize that as you go into your university days, these are not just days where you're going to focus on your grades. These are days that are going to be formative to your character. These are days that you should be more active than any other time. How many great movements have been led by students? How many great movements have had young people at the forefront? And so you have an opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to grow yourself and to grow around you in very special ways. And these days, these years ahead are precious years for you to take into consideration because every year that goes by is an opportunity that is missed or an opportunity that is taken advantage of. And we see our potential when we see our progress. Here you are, you've made progress, you have gotten one step closer to what is truly success you have achieved something that has made yourself and your family proud. And inshallah ta'ala, you're on your way to your next step. I want you to take a deep look in the mirror and to think to yourself, how am I going to surpass everyone now? I'm not going to be dependent on the environment. I'm not going to be dependent on anyone else's standards. But instead, inshallah ta'ala, I will set my own and I will change the world around me by changing myself and by putting in the extra effort. So many times people surpass others, not because of some natural talent that th that's been given to them, but by that extra motivation. And so I want you, of course, to seize the moment, celebrate tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Thank Allah, wala in shakartum la as Allah says in the Quran, if you are grateful, I will increase you. So thank Allah for what he has gotten you to and inshallah ta'ala, he will get you to the next step. And thank the people around you because whoever does not thank the people has not thanked Allah. So make sure that you thank your parents. Make sure that you thank your teachers. If there's a friend that has helped you overcome a great obstacle and take you to the next level, say thank you to that friend. We are an expressive people as Muslims. We're told to tell people that we love them for Allah and we're told to thank people for Allah. So make sure you tell the people that you need to tell today, inshallah ta'ala, that you love them and make sure that you thank them. And once again, congratulations. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you in person, but I hope inshallah ta'ala this message penetrates some hearts. Congratulations to you once again and your families. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. What a blessing to be able to hear his words again um, from all the way in Washington. All right, um, Jazakumullah khair. So again, we have the um, thank you, Jazakumullah khair, to our class, the senior class historian. Uh, Lean has prepared the video for us again. We will be emailing the copies to all of the graduates, but we will still be able to play it right now, inshallah. We'll be able to make out some of it. Um, but again, Jazakumullah khair, I want to at least be able to play it for you, um, and we will uh, send it out to you.
authority vested in me by the Board of Directors at Brighter Horizons Academy, I hereby regard you as graduates of high school. Please turn, face your parents, turn your tassel from your right to left. You are graduates and thank them. Jazakum Allah Khairan. Congratulations. Congratulations, parents and students. The greatest thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all powerful, the wise, and by whose will this glorious day has, has come. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair, 12th grade students, you have now officially, officially graduated from high school. At this time, we'd like to ask the audience members to stay seated until the, the uh, graduates leave the field or uh, exit the field, and then you can be able to take pictures towards the back, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you.